most of us go through our lives using things, tools and uh, gear and tech and never understand it fully. Sure, we could use it, we can utilize it to the best of our abilities and get the most out of it that we think we can. But until you really dive deep into what it's made of and what's inside, you really can't fully understand it and really can't utilize these things properly. Welcome back to the Rebel Tech Channel, I'm Justin, and in this video we're gonna be talking about condenser microphones and talking about how they're different, how they're more unique, and they how they differentiate between dynamic microphones, ribbon microphones, and we're going to break one apart just like we did in my dynamic microphone video and show how these things really tick. Before we get started, if you have any questions, comments, or anything whatsoever about condenser microphones or any type of gear, please leave it down in the comments section down below. I'll be happy to answer any questions. If you want to ask me more directly, I stream every Tuesday and Thursday on this channel for about an hour, and then I head over to my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash ghetto happy for the rest of the stream. Also, if you found this video helpful, entertaining, or anything whatsoever, please leave a like and consider subscribing. The first thing I want to get into is what is a condenser microphone? Well, to start off, a condenser microphone is basically your standard microphone as far as the look is concerned, but the unique thing about it is it requires power to run. And unlike your dynamic microphone that has a voice coil and a magnet that just allows sound to be converted into a electrical signal all in-house without power being added to it, a condenser microphone is a little bit different. So a condenser microphone needs power, which makes it more sensitive to sound. That extra energy allows you to capture more detail than your standard dynamic microphone. But the problem is it is more sensitive. Like I said, it's a positive, but it is also a negative, meaning that the microphone can be overloaded very easily, meaning peaking or even breaking the capsule. So you could generally categorize condenser microphones into three categories. I'm sure there's more, but the three general categories, large diaphragm, small diaphragm, and shotgun microphones. So large diaphragm microphones are usually used for your acoustic guitars, your vocals, and things that are a little bit more loud. They are less sensitive than your small diaphragm. So with a large, you're probably gonna use it with some heavy acoustics, big sound, uh, ma makes sense for the large diaphragm. And for people who are loud singers, people who are gonna give you a lot of lot of oomph in behind their voice like uh i don't know let's talk about like christina aguilera for example she's got a very strong voice uh you can talk about some rock singers like uh, freddie mercury or uh even get into back in the day with like little richard someone with a very strong voice but they want those details as well now moving on to a small diaphragm condenser microphone. As you may have seen, I did my Octava MK012 condenser microphone, and that is a small diaphragm condenser microphone. A lot of fine detail, but it's very, very sensitive. Actually, we're recording into one right now, and I am doing dual shotgun and small diaphragm just because I'm messing around with some sounds. But what you're hearing right now is a small diaphragm condenser microphone. These microphones are usually used on uh, acoustic guitars, vocals, and when I talk about vocals, they're actually used on a boom pole to capture fine detail of audio. And you want to get that dialogue really down and really get it right. That also applies to your acoustic guitar, so you can feel that full strum of the guitar. You could feel the finger plucking on the strings and get the fine detail of everything that you're going to put into it but they are very sensitive, can be overloaded very easily, and can break if you're not careful. And lastly, the shotgun microphone. For me, I really don't consider them condenser microphones. Yes, they are in that family, but shotgun microphones have become their own breed, their own genre, their own category, uh, because there's so many, and they're, they're really used for a certain thing, meaning capturing audio from a fairly 
distant location compared to like your large diaphragm or even small diaphragm they're they're usually closer there are some exceptions but shotgun microphones are usually used at a, at a distance not super far away but at a distance comparatively speaking so speaking of shotgun microphones i'm recording into one right now the sennheiser mkh416 very popular shotgun microphone used in voiceover boots and on boom poles all over the place and I heard a cool story from Troy Baker, famous voice actor, the Joker, Joel from The um, Last of Us, all that stuff. A ton of things. You could look up his IMDb page and scroll down for ages. And uh, he was talking about Peter Cullen, the voice of Optimus Prime, a uh, voice that I'm not even going to attempt to try and do. <laughs> and uh, he was talking about one time he was in the booth doing a vocal performance for a monster and uh, they were recording into a Sennheiser MKH 416. And uh, he went ahead and did the monster. That monster ended up being the Predator <coughs> from the first Predator film with Arnold Schwarzenegger and all those other guys from the movie. The cool thing is, I did say it's from a distance, but you can get a lot out of it. People use these microphones and get the most out of it. And it's, it's really cool how certain people like voice actors or, or certain people like uh, actors in general can show engineers something new and something different and push the limits. So the last thing I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to be talking about a build and this cheap little condenser microphone. I say cheap because, well, it, it's cheap in the sense of the price. It sounds okay. Uh, I, I wouldn't record much with it. I just bought it because it was really cool, looked nice, and uh, th that's about it. It doesn't really sound that great, but it gets the point across for this video because we're gonna tear this thing apart. Not brutally, I wanna still have it and maybe use it for a future video as far as use, but we're gonna talk about what's inside of it. And this is the simplest way you can explain a condenser microphone. So first off, we're going to be talking about the body. So the body is made up of three portions. The top part, which is a mesh grill, in this case gold, that you can see the diaphragm through it. The middle part, which is the cylinder in which holds and cases the body. And the bottom part, which is just a screw on bit that holds it all together. When you unscrew the bottom part, you are introduced to the the innards and the circuitry that allows the signal to be brought through to your XLR port and XLR cable. Now to access the capsule itself and the diaphragm and the backplate, undo the two screws underneath the capsule itself and the head. Once you undo those, you reveal the capsule inside, which has your diaphragm and the backplate. The capsule is made up of two parts. It's made up of the diaphragm, which is in front, this plate here with the holes in it, and the back plate, which is that mesh part behind it. The reason why you need phantom power, which is 48 volts, or some other condenser microphones require a certain specified uh, amount, but 48 volts is usually the most. This energizes that back plate and diaphragm to allow sound to be captured and it converts that audible signal through this electrical reverberation down through the circuitry through your XLR port and to whatever recorder mixer DAW whatever you want to use it for and that's basically how it works it's it's a little bit more complex than your standard dynamic microphone and ribbon microphones don't get me started because those things are, they're really useful for certain things, but they're very, very sensitive and very, very fragile. So gotta be careful with them. So right now we have the capsule all dismantled. It's really just the body was taken off, nothing crazy. And uh, what you see here, is what every condenser microphone is made up of. You can take apart any one and you're gonna find every single one has something similar that looks like this. Sure, there are variations all over the place and a ton of different options, but they all come back to this base model. 
capsule, which is a diaphragm and a back plate. You have the circuitry in here to convert that electrical signal. And then down to your XLR port, which has a hot, a neutral, and a ground. So that is a condenser microphone at its basic form. The simplest way I could explain it and the simplest microphone that I'm willing to dismantle without breaking apart a very expensive one. So that all being said, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you liked that video, please hit the like button down below and consider subscribing. It really does help this channel grow and uh, get the videos out to more people. And if you have any questions, comments, or anything whatsoever, please leave it down in the comment section down below. I'll be happy to answer any questions you guys have. If you want me to do any more dismantling of gear and tech, uh, nothing expensive because I don't have any budget for that. <laughs> and if you want to ask me anything more directly, I stream on this channel every Tuesday and Thursday on this channel for about an hour. Then I move over to Twitch, twitch.tv slash ghetto happy. And uh, I play games on Twitch and hang out, talk to you guys, and that's about it. So until next time, be safe, be kind, wear a mask if you go out, and I'll see you next time. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why am I naked? I'm in the nude. Oh, I'm so nude.